Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm gonna be creating another mechanism kind of like this one found on the same channel that uploads all these crazy mechanisms So last week I recreated this mechanism on the art of rendering and it turned out a little bit better than I expected um, And then I checked my discord today in the creation suggestions and found this uh, link to another art of rendering video and that takes me here So this appears to be just a platform that moves perfectly level uh, forwards and backwards or side to side depending on your perspective but there's a very complex set of like linkages that allow it to accomplish this which is kind of funny about this is this is one of the easiest things to accomplish in scrap mechanic you literally just put this thing on a piston and it set it to expand and contract and you'll get a uh, platform that goes perfectly level side to side or front to back but um, never mind about doing it the easy way. Let's do this the hard way today. And what's kind of funny about this is this was actually my first choice for last week's uh, video where I replicated one of these mechanisms. And I ended up not using this one because I thought it would be too difficult to actually get it to go perfectly level because in order to do that all of these beams probably have to be a very very specific length and ratio uh, from each other and I don't have those measurements and I don't know if that is going to conform to the build grid that I'm limited to but I figured multiple people have already suggested it I might as well at least give it a try and let's just see how close we can get to a perfectly straight uh, movement on this one. So my approach to this is I usually try to pause the video in like a neutral area and to me like a neutral zone is when there's a blue one is pretty much horizontal. So I'm gonna try to pause this where this is 90 degrees. That looks perfect. So the difficult thing is gonna be uh, building these with the grid but I can get an idea of how long these are by comparing them to the blue one. So now the blue one, let's just say, is gonna be five blocks where this uh, middle one is the center point. So there's gonna be one block, two block, three, four, and five. So now if I imagine that blue one rotates down, I imagine it would be right about here. So I'm gonna say that this intersection is six blocks from here, which makes this entire thing um, 11 blocks long. And if this green one is 11 blocks long, it looks like the yellow one is identical in length. So that's also 11 blocks long. And then this one looks like it might be one block longer than the blue one. So we'll go with uh, six blocks for that as well. All right, so that is my best guess for the ratios and measurements of all of these different segments. Let's see how it ends up panning out in the final product here. So some of you are asking why I chose to build this in scrap mechanic instead of like instruments of destruction which allows um, a little bit more freedom on the build grid and one of the reasons is just because of bearings in scrap mechanic are just really really easy to work with and they take up no space. So when it comes to these linkages that require layers of beams stacked on each other that are rotating around a specific bearing, uh, these bearings end up just being really easy to work with and also I have thousands of hours of building time in scrap mechanics so I'm just super familiar with how to work around all of the game's nuances compared to any other game pretty much. So when it comes to building mechanisms like this, I'm just more comfortable in scrap mechanic. So this isn't gonna be a straight beam when I actually end up um, building it in its final form because in order to weld from one point to another, I actually have to have it on the lift, which, which does not let me set these at angles. But let me see if I have this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh, that was perfect. I didn't even count that out. I just estimated it and got it right. And honestly, it looks like it's at maybe 30 degrees when the blue is in the horizontal position. So so, I don't know, let's go with this for now. All right, so there is the blue one. And then the platform actually attaches kind of to the middle of that one. And then over here is where the yellow one attaches. So this is gonna be 11. Um, and then this should be 30 degrees back in the other direction, which means that around here, is where our other attachment point ends up being. Okay, so the whole reason why I built this out not on the lift, because when I put this on a lift, you're gonna see it's uh, it looks ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense right now. I was just kind of mapping out where my attachment points need to be. So now I'm pretty sure that here and here are going to be our base attachment points. And then I'm going to make a reference board in the back here of where the other points end up being. So you can see right about there, you can see that it doesn't actually perfectly align with the build grid, which is probably gonna cause some issues in the final product, but I'm limited by this build grid. So this is gonna be the best I can do. So I just need to find the closest one. I think that's probably the closest actually. Yeah, so there is going to be one intersection. 
And then right there is going to be another pivot point. So I have those marked on that wall. Oh, I should also mark out the center of this one. Where's the center of this? So this is the center. I can actually delete the yellow one because I don't need that anymore uh, as a reference. But you can see this is not, this is not ideal. What's better? What is a better reference? That's like right in between. It's like right directly in the middle of four blocks. That's unfortunate. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna roll with it. So this and the center of this block is uh, one of the other intersection points where the orange one is supposed to attach to. I don't know which one's gonna end up closer, but that's where I'm starting right now. Okay, so what I've just done in black, I have all of my key pivot points marked uh, in, in terms of where they are in relation to each other. And now I have to connect them in a way that is on the lift so that they can all be welded and secured to each other. All right, so I'm gonna start by building a segment from this intersection to this intersection. I'm basically rebuilding the green bar now, but building it on the lift where I can't set it at an angle. So instead, I'm gonna move this out here for reference because I want to intersect with it. Instead, I'm just gonna build it up uh, like this. So I need to build from down there up to there and you can see if I do it like this I actually go too far you know at this time I'm gonna make it look less blocky and look a little bit nicer by introducing wedges because some people didn't like how blocky I made this one over here but it's still not gonna be perfect all right and there we go that intersects uh right where we need it to then I need an extra block of space Apparently that wasn't attached. All right, put that bear in there. And then I need an extra block of space before building out. So this is now gonna be the blue uh, the blue segment. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And the reason I put that extra block of space is so that when I add the, uh, the attachment point for the table right there, it's not gonna end up rubbing with this uh, segment. All right, so now we got a similar situation on the back of this blue line segment. And you know what, let me start painting these up so it's easier for me to, it's easier for me to reference which one is which. And this one starts with our yellow. So now this one has to go from here and then meet up down here. And actually, let me confirm, does that line up? Yes, that lines up perfectly with that one. All right, great. So now if I build up from here, I gotta try to meet up with that one. All right, there we go. And now because I'm on the lift, I can now weld this segment to that segment, making all of this one uh, solid segment. Okay, one thing I forgot to map out is the other intersection of the orange one. I have, this is one intersection of the orange one that needs to line up here somewhere, but the other intersection needs to go after the blue segment. It looks like there's a block in between and then the other intersection. So right, whoop, that's the wrong color. Right there should be the other intersection. This is where the other leg of the table attaches to. All right, but I need to figure out where this intersection is actually gonna be because any of these four squares are kind of where it's supposed to be. And it looks like that is gonna be the square that lines up. Yeah, every other square is kind of not ideal, but this one has a perfect alignment right here so that is where my center intersection is going to be and this is where the um one part of the orange line is going to start and then it has to end up here okay let me build out this table first so i have a little bit more context because it's getting a little bit confusing right now okay so the purple represents the table and i got to attach the orange beam from here to there you can see there's a bearing on the inside of that part of the table so i'm gonna work my way down on this one. All right, there we go. That is a nice connection. I mean, it's looking all right. I think technically this should work. Uh, just because it's a table, they have it doubled up. So there's another support on the other side. But before I actually mirror this, I think it's probably gonna be a good idea to confirm if this actually works. And oh, this was one of the other problems that, um, the, one of the reasons why I avoided this one is because unlike this one over here, this one doesn't have a clear motion programming because for this, it's super simple. You have a single powered bearing and it goes in a circle. But this one, I don't know where the power is supposed to come from or how it's supposed to be programmed because this thing just goes back and forth. I don't know exactly how this is supposed to be programmed. I guess if this thing rotates back and forth, that bearing right there uh we should see some effect but how much does it actually rotate let me reference the video okay looking at the video it looks like it almost rotates 180 degrees back and forth but it's like not quite 180 degrees especially on the right side of the rotation it's like 
87 degrees or something and then it goes to like 89 degrees on the left side this is it's a little awkward but let's let's just try that out so like 87 degrees in one direction and then it comes back to zero so i have to undo the 87 degrees and then go an additional like 89 degrees and then come back to zero again and then it loops back and forth is that at all what this thing is doing let me see if i've got that programmed right okay here we go that's the wrong way i gotta reverse this bearing all right there we go okay yep there are we already have problems you can clearly see this is not perfectly level and it stops in between steps oh it's so bad it's really bad why is it so bad though why i'm trying to see like what part of it needs to change what dimensions are the biggest culprit from this one compared to the other one like the big issue that i'm seeing is the orange one is not staying in line with the center of the blue one that's key for the table to stay level is the orange has to stay perfectly in line with the blue the center of the blue and that is not happening here and I think we actually have more problems than that. Because another thing that should be happening is this section right here should go essentially straight back and forth as well. So this is coming down to the measurements of the green and the yellow segments. You can see, oh, uh, it's not, it's not so bad, but it should go perfectly straight side to side. But you can see there's definitely, oh, especially on that end, there's definitely an arch. And I guess that uh, is just, it's just the length of these, the yellow and the uh, green. All right, I've duplicated this into another copy and this is the copy that I'm gonna modify. So we're gonna have the original one for reference to see if we make improvements. And my first improvement is to extend these ones to be just a little bit longer. So now they're pretty much like an extra block longer. All right, it looks like it may have actually made it worse. If that's the case, uh, let's shorten it up. Nope, that's pretty bad too. This could be a build grid issue. Because it seems like making it a little bit longer and making them a little bit shorter actually makes them both worse in either direction. You know, I'm wondering if maybe it is actually the attachment points of these. Maybe there should be three blocks instead of five blocks. Let's find out. Okay, yeah, this is definitely what I was afraid of going into this and why I shied away from it the first time was because I felt like to get that perfect horizontal flat movement, it requires very precise measurements of all of these different segments and any variation from that is just going to uh, ruin the, the horizontal flat movement of this platform. Platform. I'm not sure if this build grid allows the precision needed to make any changes that aren't just gonna make it worse You know what? Maybe it's not a length thing. Maybe it's a distance thing. Maybe it was the starting angle Let me uh, try moving this out by an additional block and see how that maybe feels Okay, this appears to be an improvement. Look at the right one compared to the left one You can see that the left one's angling way more than the right one now at least when it goes to the right But then when it goes to the left side uh, they're kind of both still bad going to the left side. So let me try moving this one out by one as well. Just like this. Now I just realized if I have these both hooked up to the same button, I can actually have a direct comparison. So here we go. The right one is the new one where I've widened out the stance. The left one is the old, the original one. And whoa, look at that difference. Look at that difference. Huge difference. I didn't have to change the length at all. Well, kind of. I just had to change the length only to accommodate the widening of the stance. So it was my initial starting angle was the problem. Look at that. That's almost perfect. That is actually almost perfect. I don't know if I can get more precise than that. I could try making one more change. It actually stays way more level now, but it does appear to change very, very slightly in height as it goes left and right. Here, let's do a reference test against wood here. If I extend this out like this. All right, here, now we have a good reference point. Look at that. And then, yeah, slight dip as it goes down on the sides. Then it goes nice and level. And then slight dip at the end as well. That's not bad. 
This might be... I don't know if I can get better than this. I'm going to try one more time just um, widening the stance just by one more block on this one. All right, so I have version two, and then you can see the difference over here. I just added that one extra length to the side of the stance. So let's see how this feels now in comparison. Oh, it's worse. That actually made it way worse. Look at the left one. Oh, that made it so much worse. Oh, that's interesting. Now it actually goes at a slight diagonal. Yeah, you can see just what one block of difference will make. Yeah, this one might be the best version. Well, if that's the case, let me finish this off. I'll build the, the second half, the mirrored version of the mechanism so we have one uh, complete replica. And then let's compare that to the easy way to build this in Scrap Mechanic. All right, and here is the full mechanism built out. And if you don't pay too close attention, it kind of looks like it's moving in a nice, smooth, just straight back and forth. But... um. We know that it's not that precise. Now, let me show you the uh, lazy scrap mechanic way of accomplishing this. You see, you just put a piston right there, uh, and then you build your platform off of the piston, however big, however big you want to build it. And then you can attach a controller to that, and uh, you set it to go, I don't know, let's say nine blocks. And then you set it to loop, and hook it up to a button, and this is what you get. There you go. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, it does function slightly different. This one will inherently have a pause in it. Pause, come back, pause, come back. Whereas this one actually doesn't have a pause in it, which is really interesting. It literally, it instantly switches directions, but both of these are slightly different than the, or the original design has a much smoother directional change. This one is kind of just immediately changing directions. The, uh, the original design has more of a ramp, like a ramping speed. It slows down and then speeds back up to full speed. This one j just stays at the same speed even as it's switching directions. So yeah, if you've ever wondered how to turn this 10 second build into an hour long build that is slightly less perfect, uh, then look no further than this mechanism right here. Although to be fair, this one has the unique characteristic of relying solely on rotational movement. Whereas this one obviously requires piston technology in order to work. This one, no pistons at all, only bearings, which is kind of, it makes it really interesting. But yeah, between the first version on the left and then the final version on the right, I'd say that this was actually a pretty significant improvement Improvement, and I'm pretty proud of this one. If you guys have any other ideas of things you'd like to see me try to recreate in Scrap Mechanic or other games uh, that are more fitting for it, then let me know down in the comments below. I tend to think of Scrap Mechanic as the ideal game for like me mechanism recreations and experimentation. Trail Makers is more suited to like ve vehicular experimentation. And then Instruments of Destruction is of course more geared towards destruction-based experimentation, as well as other types of physics like rope physics and things like that. So yeah, those main three games that I have on my channel right now, they really have their own unique set of strengths that I like to use them for in particular situations. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.